In this video, I'm going to talk about chemical filtration and specifically about chemical filtration. Normally, I drift off into other things and get sidetracked. But in this one, I want to talk about what to use in the way of chemical filtration, when to use it, and where to use it in a filter. In fact, in different sort of filter setups. So let's get started by looking at a canister filter. In the US, this would be known as a Sun Sun. And in the UK, it's known as All Pond Solutions. They're exactly the same filters, come from the same factory in China. Water goes in, it goes down to the bottom, and then it rises up through the trays, into the pump, back to the tank. Very simple, it's a bottom to top setup. So in this particular filter, the chemical media, whatever it is you were using, would be in the top. It would be the very last thing that the water hits. In fact, in any setup, it would be in last. So you would go mechanical, biological, then chemical. I'll explain exactly why the chemical filtration always needs to be last in a bit, but I'll just show you where the chemical filtration would go in this setup, bottom to top. So remember, it's working bottom to top. So this is the tray that the water would hit last come in from the tank go down there up through the trays so it would hit this tray last in the very top so that is where your chemical filtration would go in there so the water hits that last I'll ensure that this doesn't get clogged up and it works at high efficiency for however long it works for so if the water was coming in and hitting the top tray first and then going down through all the trays before being drawn out and spat back to the tank, that would be regarded as being a top-down filter. So you'd go coarse, medium, fine pad, followed by your biological media. And in the bottom tray, that's where you would have your chemical filtration, right in the bottom of the bottom tray. So the water hits that last before being returned back to the tank. Now if you were using a booster, like that, that would generally be on before your canister filter and it would be full of foams, like that. So the water would come in either the top or the bottom. It would go through all your foams and then it would go into your canister filter which would generally just be filled up with um, filter media it basically just frees up an extra tray in your canister filter however a booster can also be used on the outflow as well and there's a lot of people with the fluval range of filters use one of these on the outlet but instead of having it full of foams they have it full of media so they they make use of the cartridges that go down inside the like 07 or 06 series uh, with the foams in in the main canister then bottom tray would have the medium pad fine pad a couple of trays of media followed by this full of media so that's the way they would generally boost their system and in that situation if you were pumping out from your canister into the bottom of here and having it going up back out to your tank and this was full of media your chemical filtration would go on the very top like so nice and flat so the water can get through it as your media underneath incidentally the 2.3 liter version which is the bigger version of the Sun Sun or all pond solutions booster will hold 1.7 kilos of Bio Home Ultimate, just in case you're interested. And just like the canister, if it wasn't going bottom to top, but if it was going top to bottom, you would have top part filled with the media and your chemical filtration on the very bottom. So again, it would be the last thing the water hits before it gets returned to the tank. In an internal filter, like the dual filters, they work top to bottom. So your chemical filtration would go on the very bottom. Mechanical, biological, chemical. Internal filters vary a little bit. Some work top to bottom, some work side to middle, but 
however you can fit your chemical media in, it wants to be last in the system. Okay, so the chemical media, no matter what type you use, has to go last in the system. So it goes mechanical, biological, then chemical. And that's because the chemical media is there to do a specific job, or at least it should be, which I'll explain in a little bit. For example, that one, nitrate remover, that's those pads or pods that we saw in these filters. That's there to lock in excess nitrate. If you do that before the biological side of your filtration, it starves the bacteria of the available nitrate. So your anaerobic side of things never gets going. Likewise, that one there is to draw in and lock up ammonia. So it's useful if you're setting a new tank up or if you're going on holiday and you don't want the, you know, the overfeeding of the fish, which inevitably happens, to pollute your tank, you'd stick one of these in the filter. Any excess ammonia would get pulled in. So if you have that before your biological media, it'll starve the bacteria of the ammonia. Therefore, if you're just trying to cycle a tank and you've got this before your bacteria, your bacteria won't have any food. Your cycle won't get going. Your ammonia will probably never rise to a detectable level, but you won't have any bacteria or any active bacteria in your media because they just won't have the food. So the minute the effectiveness of this chemical media wears off, you've got no bacteria and ammonia goes through the roof and by then you've probably got a tank full of fish. Fish go belly up and you probably blame it on either the chemical media or the biological media or something. Anything other than having the thing in the wrong place because generally that's what people do. <laughs> so by having your chemical media last it allows all the nutrients, all the food that the bacteria needs to get to the bacteria and have a flourishing biological side of things. And when your filter is totally mature, you won't need either of these. These are really just for during setup or when you go on holiday or you know, like an isolation tank or something like that, you know, where you, you, you just have to put fish in an emergency or you just don't want the, uh, the, uh, the undeveloped filter to result in bad water conditions. This just helps it out. So really the only thing that you would need to add weekly is your conditioner to condition the new water that goes in after you've been around with a gravel cleaner. That's it. See, some people, when they open the cabinets up, it's just like a pharmacy shelf. It's pretty ridiculous, you know? And there's obviously something wrong if you need that many lotions and potions. Yeah, you don't need to add bacteria every week, which a lot of people get conned into. Again, I'll cover that in a second. From time to time, if you go on holiday or you set up like an isolation tank, if you have more fish than the filter will cope with, or you're just setting the filter up and you want to add fish quicker, you might want to add the ammonia pods to draw in excess ammonia. Likewise, in the early stages of your filter, before your anaerobic side of things get set up, you might want to add a nitrate pod or two or three, depending on the size of your tank. If you've got bogwood and you've got like a South American system or something and the bogwood is just staining the water relentlessly or you've just put a course of treatments through and you want to draw in residual treatments, carbon pods or pelletized carbon or activated charcoal or something, that draws in the excess treatments, it draws in the tannins and colours from the wood, it basically makes the water clear. And if you've got a problem with nuisance algae and, you know, you, you just kind of get the levels right and something's all out of whack, chances are it could be phosphate. Reduce that level, hopefully everything will balance out after that and then going forward, you won't get a problem with nuisance algae. So that's four things that it would be useful to have on hand, but you don't necessarily need them on a day-to-day -day or weekly basis. So that's pretty much all you should ever need uh, for anything that would commonly go wrong in your tank and as I say you don't need to buy all these and have them on hand they are available as and when you need them and you don't need to use them long term either use them until they solve the problem chuck them away and by then hopefully the balance of the tank should be restored as long as you've got good filtration filtration is still 
90% of fish keeping. Now all of these ones are from RP Aquatics. That's the range that they do because that in effect is all that's needed. Uh, and I appreciate that. And they let people know where they should go. They should go in the correct place. And they're honest enough to say that, you know, when that balance is restored, just chuck them away. I like that because in this day and age, there's not many companies who are honest about their products or about other people's products. And that brings me back to conditioners, which I mentioned before. As far as water conditioners go, which you need to add with every new water change, all you need is something that takes out chlorine, chloramines, heavy metals and so on, and doesn't mess about with the ammonia, nitrite or nitrate. And that might sound silly, because obviously we've got something that does lock away ammonia and nitrate. But these can be used in the correct place, which gives your bacteria time to draw in as, you know, to use as much of the ammonia, nitrite and nitrate as it wants to and flourish. If you've got some sort of conditioner that locks up the ammonia, nitrite and nitrate, that isn't just last in the system. It doesn't give the bacteria a chance. It locks it up in the water. So it effectively starves the bacteria. First part of your cycle, which is the reduction of ammonia and nitrite, should only take two or three weeks when you've got a suitably sized filter and you've got good media in it. It commonly takes seven to eight weeks when you're using the sort of conditioners with the binding agents in. And it, it frustrates the living hell out of me because I see people on forums which are coincidentally sponsored often by the people who are selling these bloody conditioners. So yeah, I can't get it done. I just, it won't complete, you know, and there's other people saying, oh, it only took me two or three weeks. And you know, it should be easy, what's wrong? And I know exactly what's wrong, but I'm not on any forums and I don't like to stick me oar in. All I need to do is change the conditioner. But all they're being recommended to do is add more bacteria. And you can see where that's going. The bacteria that's being added in is just count it's just masking the side effect from your dodgy conditioner Arrgh! and then you'll probably get talked into using something else and something else and something else to restore the stability of the tank and all this sort of nonsense you can ask yourself in that situation qui bono who benefits and it ain't the fish keeper that's pretty much the, the pfizer business model <laughs> It's the Hegelian dialectic problem, reaction, solution. You cause the problem, the reaction is, oh my God, what we're going to do about this? I've got a solution. There you go. It'll cost you X amount. <laughs> Identify the problem and treat that particular problem. Don't go broad range. You can get some things which claim to draw in tannins and chemicals and uh, heavy metals and ammonia, nitrite and nitrate. And all they do is pull in too much stuff which in turn knocks the bacteria back. The bacteria in your filter and in your system is the most important part of the system and looking after that is your priority. These things here are supplemental. They're there as and when you need them in the correct place and that doesn't affect your biological side of things. It's a difficult thing to try and convey but if you try and take the nuclear option and go for stuff that claims to do too many things, 99 times out of 100, it will balls up the cycle. And then you'll be getting something to treat this and that'll cause a side effect here and you need something else and side effects and treatment, side effect, treatment, side effect, treatment. And then you open up that cabinet and it's full of bottles of stuff, which you just don't need. I almost went on a mad rant there. But the very last thing I will show is that. That is full of little black balls, little gel balls, which are full of bacteria. That is what I give away in little packets with all the filter media that I sell. I actually spend, I don't know, five or 600 quid a month on this stuff just to give it away and I 
realise that that isn't a very sustainable business model, so I may have to look at uh, that generous side of things in the future and kind of reduce how much I give away. But that bacteria is excellent. It does say for pond use, no reason why you can't use it in aquariums, and I've been giving that stuff away for a decade or more, not one problem. It's basically the same bacteria as you would buy if you had the equivalent balls or equivalent treatments for aquariums, but you'd be paying three or four times as much for the aquarium version. I like it in the gel balls because that would be added in with the filter media, with your biological filter media, and in the presence of ammonia and nitrite, the gel would start to dissolve, it would go onto the media, and it would release the bacteria directly onto the media. The bacteria would get on and in the media, and it would set up very, very quickly and very naturally as well. I would avoid using the bottled bacteria because it's like a, it's almost like a pump and dump sort of thing. You just, you blast it in, the bacteria blooms, and if there's not enough food, it dies out. And then when the food becomes available, it blooms and it dies out. So you tend to get like a boom bust scenario and then you'd add more and you could end up cocking things up. The gel balls, in my opinion, are the best way to set up your filter. And there is a marine version of those as well. Uh, I think I've covered everything I need to cover. At least I hope I have, because I'm absolutely freezing now. Um, if I haven't, I will make another video. And if there's anything in particular you'd like me to cover with relating to um, like chemical side of filtration just send me an email i often miss the comments so my email address is along the bottom of the screen there now or you can just phone me up my phone number is along there now as well thanks for watching i'll see you next time